This is an ABC News special report. I'm Diane Maceda. We have breaking news. Officials are holding a press conference following a major bridge collapse in Baltimore. Let's listen. This morning, our state is in shock. And I want to take this moment to speak directly to the people of our state. To our first responders, I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of your courage. I'm in awe of your strength. I'm in awe of everything you do for each and every one of us. You saw a crisis and you said, what can I do to help? And our response teams are doing everything in our power to rescue and recover the victims of this collapse literally as we speak. People who, as we speak, are out there are divers, our air assets, people who right now are working to save lives and are doing it because the state asked. And we will update the public as the work continues. To our partners inside and outside of government, I know this has been a long night. We started coordinating immediately after the Key Bridge collapsed. We've been standing together every step of the way from our county leadership to our city leadership, to our state leadership, to our federal leadership. And I'm grateful to call each and every one of you, not just colleagues, but I'm grateful to call you friends. And to the people of Baltimore, and each and every one of the 6.3 million Marylanders who call our state home, I recognize that many of us are hurting right now. I recognize that many of us are scared right now. And so I want to be very clear about where everything stands. We are still investigating what happened, but we are quickly gathering details. The preliminary investigation points to an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis, and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath, but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. That is our pledge, and that's our commitment, and we're going to keep that commitment. And lastly, to the victims of this tragedy and their loved ones. All of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you. And we will always be thinking of you. We pray for the construction workers who are on the key bridge. And we pray for everyone who has been touched by this tragedy and their families and all of their loved ones. But Maryland, we will get through this. Because that is the Maryland spirit, and that's what Maryland is made of. We are Maryland tough, and we are Baltimore strong. So in the face of heartbreak, we come together. We embrace one another, and we come back strong. That's what we've always done. That's what we'll continue to do. And that's what we're going to get done together. And we're going to pray for Baltimore. And I'd like to turn this over to Senator Van Hollen, who's done a remarkable job in our fellow delegation in providing support. So thank you, Senator. Thank you, Governor. As the governor said, we come together. We come together in Baltimore, we come together in Maryland. First of all, our hearts go out to all those who are on the bridge and their loved ones. We pray for them. Our gratitude goes out to the first responders who, as we speak, are out there continuing to conduct search and rescue operations. I want to thank the governor, the local, the mayor, county executive, all the people gathered here as part of Team Baltimore and Team Maryland. And the federal government is with them as a partner. The Coast Guard, as we speak, is also part of this mission. Coast Guard cutters, Coast Guard aviation assets. I spoke uh, twice today uh, with Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg has pledged that they will do everything they can to very quickly release emergency response funds for this important project. The National Highway Transportation Administration 
administrator is on his way to Baltimore if he's not here already. They will be releasing those early funds once all, all the parties are fully engaged. Second, the National Transportation Safety Board. I talked to the chair this morning. Uh, she and her team will be conducting an investigation of what happened. And finally, the Army Corps of Engineers, naval assets uh, for uh, looking uh, below the surface uh, and clearing. All of this is going to be part of the effort. Uh, the governor uh, is leading Team Maryland. The mayor and the county executive, of course, Team Baltimore. Uh, but I'm just here to say, t together with Ben Carton, Senator Carton, um, and Congressman Fumé and others, the federal government is your partner in this effort. Thank you, and again, to the people of our state and the people of this great city. We're with you. We love with you. We will get through this together. Thank you. Good morning again, uh, Paul Wiedefeld, Secretary of Transportation. Just a few updates uh, since our meeting this morning. Um, the, uh, the crew that was out there working was basically repairing potholes. As you understand, that had nothing to do with a structural issue at all in the, in the facility. Um, at this time, one person has been uh, rescued and so far, and <clears throat> our, continue, our efforts continue in terms of that. Um, engineers are on site right now determining both sort of the structural issues, obviously some of the debris field, and we'll start to work that, but we'll work hand in hand with the NTSB before we take any further action in that area. With that, I did want to introduce the FBI for a few comments as well. Hello, my name is Bill Del Bano. I'm the special agent in charge of the Baltimore Field Office. First and foremost, I want to say that our hearts go out to everyone that is impacted by this tragedy, especially the victims and their families. On behalf of the FBI, I would like to say that we are with you, we are with Baltimore, and we're with the partners every step of the way. The FBI, on very first, looking at and assessing this matter from an investigative standpoint, I want to be clear that there is no specific or credible information to suggest that there are ties to terrorism in this incident. The FBI has been part of this response from the beginning. We uh, came within one hour to the command post and quickly lashed up with our very strong partners all along the way. We will bring whatever resources that the FBI has to bear. We've already brought our crisis response, our victim services, and just recently our underwater search evidence recovery teams are on site. And we will continue to provide all those resources as long as it takes. And as the investigation goes on, we will take it to its logical conclusion along with our partners. To the people of Baltimore, to the public, I ask you to be patient as we go through this and as information becomes available to us. And lastly, I want to say thank you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to everyone who uh, in the FBI and counts on the FBI. We will always bring what we need to the people of Baltimore, and we are with you. I would next like to introduce the Coast Guard. Good morning. The Coast Guard is still actively searching at this time. We are using response boat crews from two of our local Coast Guard stations, one of our Hilo crews from an air station in Atlantic City, and also one of our Cutter crews on one of our 87-foot patrol boats. We will continue to work with our local, state, and federal partners during this tragedy. Thank you. As far as you are aware, was the collapse of that bridge inevitable as that ship hit that part of the bridge? No, we're, we're still in the process of investigating exactly what happened. 
Uh, so we, we don't have any further details uh, to about whether or not it was inevitable or not. But no structural issue with the bridge? No, there were, well, in fact, the bridge was actually fully up to code, so we have no further information about uh, what, was the, what, what happened. Can you give Governor, us is all, shipping, is all shipping in and out of the port for. now stopped completely? And do you have any estimate very early on as to how long it will be before shipping can resume to the port of Baltimore? Yeah, we, we, don't have, uh, we don't have any estimates on timeline because right now our exclusive focus is on saving lives. Our exactly. exclusive Thank focus you. is on search and rescue. Could you give us a better sense for the number? Because we've heard, I know Mr. Wiedefeld said one had been rescued, but earlier from Baltimore we heard that two had been rescued. Can you tell us the total numbers we're talking about that may be, that you're searching for and how many have been rescued? Well. We, there are eight individuals, uh, six are being uh, searched for right now. One is in, uh, was taken to the hospital, and one is uh, not in the hospital that we're speaking to. So six unaccounted for? Yes. And does that involve the individuals that may have been in vehicles that went in the water? Or is that just the construction? We know. We believe it's the construction. What about? What okay, about so we don't think there's anyone in, in vehicles in the water? No, we do not. Okay, we'll take questions right here. Take this question here. Governor, two questions. Quick, how quickly did you find out about what happened here, and what was your reaction when you heard the scale of what just occurred at that bridge earlier today? Well, I mean, I, it was, uh, I think it was probably within minutes of, of, of everything, less than an hour, when I know that my phone first rang. Uh, and, you know, first from the, the mayor of Baltimore and also from our chief of staff. Um, and it was... Uh, we know the key bridge. I've written over the key bridge countless times. So many of us know the key bridge because it is our normal commute. This is a place that is a normal commute route for over 30,000 Marylanders every single day. And so to hear the words that the key bridge has collapsed, it's shocking um, and heartbreaking. And immediately our, the first thought and the first ideas go back to what happened to the people? Where are we? What was the impact on on, on, on human life? Um, but for every single one of us who are Marylanders, the words that the key bridge is gone, it it still shakes us because for over for 47 years, that's all we've known. And so this is a uh, this is this is uh, not just not just unprecedented from what we're seeing, from what we're looking at today. Um, it's heartbreaking. Governor, can you confirm that the crew on the ship uh, alerted authorities that it had lost propulsion and was in trouble? Uh, we, we can we can confirm that uh, that the, the crew uh, notified uh, notified authorities of, uh, of a power issue, yes. and that they had lost power on the ship. Was there any ability to shut down the bridge? Sorry, can you please repeat uh, the numbers before you go? Looking for seven people. Have been rescued. I'm not you're looking for six people, but one has been rescued, so three people has been rescued in total. Only two. Total of eight. Total of eight. <coughs> one rescued in the hospital. One uh, not in the hospital, but has uh, communicated with that person. And then six that we are searching for. And all construction workers working on the potholes? Or the, all eight of them? The, um, yes, they were all related to the construction. Right. Yes. So we, we heard that multiple vehicles went into the water. Any word on how many vehicles went into the water and the condition of those people that were in the vehicle? Not at this time. All right, we're going to shift over here. Was there any way to uh, shut down the bridge? Was there enough time for that distress call to trigger something like that? Now, the, the thing that we know is that, uh, you know, even as the boat was coming in, you know, we had a ship that was coming in at eight minutes. Uh, so coming in at, uh, at, a, at a very, a very rapid speed. Um, we do know that uh, the investigation is, is, is currently going on. Uh, but I, I have to say I'm thankful for the folks who, who once the, you know, once the warning came up and once notification came up uh, that there was a mayday, who literally by being able to stop cars from coming over the bridge, uh, these people are heroes. They saved lives. Less. They saved lives. Less. So they were able to go, go, go. stop. Traffic. The focus is on rescue yeah. now and humanity. But looking forward, is there any vision for how long it could possibly take for the wreckage to build, how it could possibly 
can be done. Can you look into the future at all at this point? This is going to be a long-term build. It's going to be a build that's going to require every facet and every aspect of our society. Um, it is something that I can tell you we are going to get this done. We are going to make sure that that this is is not just not just rebuilt, but that we are going to rebuild in a way that remembers the people who this tragedy has impacted, and also do it in a way that uh, that honors the community uh, that it serves. But um, but right now, uh, I could not give you any form of estimate on timing or, or cost. Right now, uh, my and all of our exclusive focus is we're just trying to save lives. Can the mayor talk on the state of emergency locally? We're please? listening to officials there in Maryland after a bridge collapse Thank in you. Baltimore. A massive cargo ship collided with that bridge overnight around 1.35 in the morning. And now we're hearing from the Maryland governor there that they are ruling this an accident so far with no credible evidence that this was an act of terror right now. We're hearing six people are still unaccounted for. I want to go to our ABC senior national correspondent, Terry Moran, who's there in Baltimore. Terry, what do we know so far about how this happened? Well, Diane, as we heard in the press conferences that ABC has been reporting, it seems that this ship, the 948-foot-long Dolly, a Singapore-flagged cargo vessel, uh, you can actually see it still stuck there in the channel, as uh, obviously, that they lost propulsion at some point in the night. They alerted uh, bridge officials that they had lost control of the ship, and then the collision and the steel truss bridge came down into the water. That is... Uh, the working theory. There were automobiles on the bridge. There was construction uh, going on on that bridge. And as you just said, six people still believed missing. We are hearing uh, the helicopters, uh, search and rescue helicopters from time to time. We're told that there were divers in the water. They were looking on the surface of the water as well and on the deck of that enormous cargo ship for anyone who may have survived. That effort continues here. But this apparently began uh, when the ship lost propulsion, lost control, and collided into the bridge. And Elizabeth, the, the governor confirmed that they did get a signal from the ship that they had lost power and that they did see a potential collision coming. And it sounds like that may have saved some lives with the ability to stop cars from going over the bridge. So what can you tell us about the victims here, the six people unaccounted for, and the two that were apparently rescued? And Diane, the governor's message to the victims is our hearts are broken. So as we understand it, one person has been rescued so far. Those six people are still unaccounted for. And there is a very clear effort to continue this search and rescue operation right now. And I do just want to show you, Diane, the scale of this operation from where you are. You can see that the cargo ship there is stuck between the bridge that has collapsed. We have seen U.S. Coast Guard ships circling around all morning. And as Terry mentioned, there are now divers who are searching underwater. Earlier today, police said that they did get sonar activity that indicated that some of those vehicles were underwater. So that could explain part of the search. We've also seen a heavy helicopter presence here all throughout the morning. Earlier today, confidential briefing memos that were obtained by ABC News indicated that the people who were on board the crew on board could be accounted for, but this is a very fluid situation. It has just now been a couple of hours. A lot of the search and rescue was happening in the dark, so now they're really trying to uh, ramp this up to find the victims. Diane. And, and I want to bring in ABC's transportation correspondent, Gio Benitez, as well, because, Gio, this is not only a massive bridge, it's also a vital shipping port. Talk about the impact here. Well, we're talking about one of the largest ports in the country, right? The Baltimore port. I, I've been there. It's one of the biggest, and it may be the biggest to, to ship cars, for example. So it is a major, major uh, transportation hub uh, to get stuff moving through this country, not just in the Baltimore area. And when you're looking at this and you see these images right here that you're seeing, you can just see how big this waterway is and how important it is to this country. Right now, Diane, I think one of the big, big questions is going to be how this happened, right? We're talking about that loss of, of propulsion on this ship. Uh, when you're looking at the video uh, that we've seen, you actually see at one point the lights turning off. So what caused the power loss? That is going to be very, very big for investigators right now. You're seeing that video right there uh, with all of the lights shut off. Moments before this, just quite literally seconds before this happened, that's when the lights went off. And so clearly there was some sort of loss of power. And so that's what investigators are going to be looking at. 
So again, six people unaccounted for there after that massive bridge collapse in Baltimore when that uh, container ship collided with the bridge. Divers are in the water now searching for those missing and the investigations are underway now to find out how this happened and the broad impact now to shipping and beyond. We will continue to stay on top of the story. Right now, we're going to return to your regular programming. For some of you, that's GMA in the West and our coverage continues on ABC News Live and on ABCnews.com. David Muir will have the very latest on World News Tonight. For now, I'm Diane Macedo in New York. Have a good day. This has been a special report from ABC News. America. Here's to good mornings in America. Can you feel the love? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mornings that inspire, filled with hope, kindness, joyous surprises, and so much fun. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Start your day with Good Morning America's Ray of Sunshine, highlighting the best of America and helping make dreams come true. Wow. I'm just so happy. It is so good. Get ready to smile and put the good into your morning, America, because you know what will make the morning better? A little ray of sunshine. <laughs> What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. This is our combat operations center. We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not a care, in it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know who you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. We have breaking news. The Maryland governor now says there is no sign of terror after a major bridge collapse in Baltimore. That bridge went down after a cargo ship collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge uh, going over Baltimore's I-695. I want to bring in team coverage right now. Six people are currently unaccounted for. Divers are in the water searching for those people. And our senior correspondent, uh, na national correspondent, Terry Moran, is there in Baltimore following the latest along with Elizabeth Shelsey, Selena Wang, Sam Sweeney, and, and former New Jersey Chief Fire Chief Steve McGill for more. Uh, Sam, let's start with you. The Maryland governor says this collision uh, happened in the middle of the night, and so far they're finding no credible evidence of terror, so they're ruling this an accident. But what do we know about how this happened? One of the big takeaways from this is that this ship said that it had a problem, Perhaps it lost power propulsion and didn't have the steering ability or maneuverability that it should have. It was coming in fast at eight knots, and it gave the 
the bridge team enough time to issue a mayday alert and they were able to stop traffic and therefore save lives. If you watched closely on the streaming video before impact, you see a lot of traffic, tractor trailers, cars moving across that bridge and then just moments before impact when that bridge falls, we really don't see any traffic at all. And that is one of the big moments and takeaways from that press conference. There, uh, a hero there was able to stop traffic because of that May Day call. Yeah, Terry, it sounds like this could have been a lot worse. There were also questions because we knew that the bridge was undergoing work at the time. What kind of work did that maybe contribute? The engineers are now saying that there was no structural issue to this bridge. And so whatever caused the collapse happened because of the collision, not because of any code issue with the bridge itself. Where does this investigation go from here? Well, I think it'll focus on what happened on that ship because you're absolutely right. There was two days ago uh, that this bridge uh, commemorated 47 years of serving the people of Baltimore and this region. There was nothing wrong with the bridge uh, over the course of those years. This ship uh, did lose control, and, and I think the investigation will focus on that why. Of course, it will also focus uh, on how the bridge responded uh, to contact with that ship, but you know, it's a massive vehicle uh, ship, the vessel. The ship was 948 feet long, you know, filled with cargo uh, containers, a massive amount of weight crashing into that bridge. I don't think the structural issues of the bridge are going to be the issue. It is almost certainly going to be what happened on board that ship. And beyond that, the impact on the community. You heard in Governor Westmore's voice in what he had to say, this is a shock, a shock to the people of Baltimore. This is uh, one of their major arteries for commuting and for all kinds of business purposes, but also uh, this is part of their part of their city, part of the landscape of the city. And now the port, one of the main lifelines of the Baltimore economy, is closed. No ships going out, no ships coming in. This is going to be a major disruption uh, economically and, and psychologically, socially for the people of Baltimore. Elizabeth, uh, six people are still unaccounted for. Two have been rescued. What can you tell us about the victims and the search now underway? And Diane, we know that the two have been res rescued. One did not need treatment or did not ask for treatment. The other has been rescued. And now those six are part of this ongoing search and rescue effort. And officials are saying this is still a very active search and rescue. You can see behind me, this is just a massive area that they're searching. We have seen the U.S. Coast Guard here all morning. There is also a heavy presence of helicopters overhead. They're diving underwater. Earlier, police said they did detect through sonar activity evidence of vehicles underwater. So they're looking to try to find the victims there. But this is very much an active scene. It has been all throughout the morning. But the struggle, Diane, obviously, this took place at 1.30 in the morning. Up until around 7 a.m., it was completely dark. So the conditions for that search and rescue were difficult. It is frigid water temperatures. It was windy. The wind has died down a little bit. So officials are saying they're very much focused right now on trying to find those six people who are still unaccounted for. And Selena, the governor and the mayor here have both declared uh, states of emergency. How's the White House responding? Well, we know that senior White House officials have been in touch with local officials to offer any federal assistance that they need. And the Maryland governor says that he has been in touch with the Biden administration about deploying federal resources to the area. Now, the president, he has been briefed on this. He's going to continue to be briefed on this throughout the day. No word yet on if he's going to deliver any public remarks on this. The White House has said that their hearts go out to all of the families of those who are still missing after this tragic incident. And the White House from this this morning, they've been saying that there is no evidence, there's no indication here that there was any malicious intent that corroborates what we heard from the FBI earlier during that press conference, saying that there's no signs here of any acts of terror. Now, the president, he is still scheduled to travel in just a few hours to North Carolina with the vice president. That is still on his schedule, but again, he's going to continue to be briefed on this. And Steve, this happened in the middle of the night. The sun's obviously up now, but it wasn't for many hours uh, while the search and rescue mission was underway. Talk to me about the conditions here. The water is cold. There's now metal and lots of other things in the way. How challenging is this? Uh, this is very challenging because of uh, the currents that are going on. There's probably a full moon, so there's a, the tide is a be a lot higher. You're worried about that boat shifting around. Also, the bridge structure shifting around. And, uh, you know, they're not only looking for people in the water, they're also going to be put, uh, checking for people on the shoreline because the bodies could have washed up on the shore. And uh, this search is going to go be going on for days. 
Uh, probably sometime today they're going to make this a recovery as opposed to search and rescue, uh, just due to the temperature of the water and the amount of air pockets that could be in a car or a truck or something like that. Uh, it's a very difficult situation, and there's a lot of just uh, a lot of uh, logistics going on behind the scenes that you don't even know about. Sam, officials didn't touch on this in the presser, but the company who owns this ship is saying that they were not steering the ship at the time. Often these large ships have local pilots that steer them out of a port before the regular crew takes over. So what can you tell us about that in terms of how this happened? Yeah, so that's a standard operating procedure. When you're in a port or a confined space or uh, certain waterways, like parts of the Chesapeake Bay, uh, for example, which is nearby here, you have a local pilot. The person's job is specifically to bring ships in and out of the harbor. That's what they are trained to do. They are specialists, and they are standing next to the captain. So the, the, the ship's crew is there. The ship that the crew that brings it across the ocean is with them on board, but it's the actual local pilot who brings it in and out of the harbor. And that's exactly what was happening here. But again, the big question is, why did this ship uh, lose power, maneuverability? Uh, that's anyone's guess, and that will be what the NTSB will be focusing on uh, today and in the days to come. And Terry, we heard the Maryland governor there call this heartbreaking, not only for obvious reasons people are missing, but also because that bridge was such a staple in the area. What does this mean not only for land travel, but also the shipping impact here? Uh, it, it's a major problem for the Port of Baltimore, the ninth largest port in the United States, one of the main entry points for automobiles and car parts right into this, this harbor. And nobody's getting in and nobody's getting out. We already heard there are 40 ships that had Baltimore on their destination at some point in transit. They are backing up uh, into the Atlantic Ocean, we've heard at this point. And so this is a major impact economically, but also, as you say, uh, you know, for the city itself. Hey, this is going to be a long time recovering. There'll be have to be major adjustments made. There's a huge uh, Amazon facility not far from here, a FedEx facility. A lot of companies using this port and this location as a way of getting into this part of the country and the East Coast and beyond. All of those uh, parts of, uh, of those businesses are going to have to be rerouted around roads, down roads and rails, because this port is closed. Elizabeth, what are the next steps here? Look, Diane, I mean, for now, the focus, and this was very clear from the press conference just now, is to try to find those six people who are still unaccounted for. The search and rescue effort is really deeply underway, and the, the fact is that that's what they want to talk about. The governor said he understands this will have a big impact on the community. Terry touched on the economic impacts, the impacts to workers here who are part of uh, the the companies that are employing, uh, employed at those companies that are part of the business of those ports, of the port. But ultimately, Diane, right now, what comes next is trying to find the six people who are unaccounted for and, and making sure that they can do everything that they can as time goes by in the daylight to make sure that they can find those people, Diane. All right. Terry Moran, Elizabeth Schulze, Selena Wang, Sam Sweeney, and Steve McGill, thank you. And we will have continuing coverage of the bridge collapse all day long here on ABC News Live. And we're also following another major story today. The Supreme Court is set to hear its first case involving abortion rights since overturning Roe v. Wade. We're listening live right after the break. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. 
so much at stake, so much on the line. More Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes. And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Here's to good mornings in America. Can you feel the love? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mornings that inspire, filled with hope, kindness, joyous surprises, and so much fun. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Start your day with Good Morning America's ray of sunshine, highlighting the best of America and helping make dreams come true. Wow. I'm just so happy. It is so good. Get ready to smile and put the good into your morning, America, because you know what will make the morning better? A little ray of sunshine. <laughs> First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Brit Clenet on board a destroyer, the USS Gravely, on the Red Sea. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Hi, I'm Diane Maceda. We're following breaking news. An urgent search is underway after a cargo ship crashed into a Baltimore bridge, sending cars, people, and part of the Francis Scott Key Bridge into the water. Authorities say it happened around 1.35 this morning as the ship was leaving Maryland. The governor says the ship reported a power issue and sent a mayday signal before it hit the bridge. Officials now say they're looking for six people unaccounted for. Two people have already been rescued. ABC's Sam Sweeney joins me now from Baltimore with more on this. Uh, Sam, walk me through so far what we know about how this happened. Well, it was about 1.30 in the morning when this ship was leaving the port of Baltimore, headed out for a 27-day journey to Colombo, Sri Lanka. It was under the command of a pilot. That is a local expert who brings ships in and out of the Baltimore Harbor. This is standard operating procedure, and they are normally with the crew of the ship who will then take it across the ocean. Uh, what happened? They lost some sort of propulsion, some sort of power. We don't know why. Could have been a fire, could have been an engine issue. We just don't know why. But they lost power and control of the ship. Luckily, they had some time, we don't know exactly how long, it could have been a couple of minutes, to warn the bridge that they were possibly going to hit. Uh, and it gave enough warning for the bridge to send out a mayday call and to stop traffic. We also know that there were construction workers working to fill potholes overnight on the bridge, and it had been down, uh, limited down to one lane. Uh, the question is, what happened to those construction workers? We still know that six are missing and two people were rescued. One is in critical condition. Diane? And Sam, given work was happening on the bridge, there were some questions about its structural integrity. The governor is now saying there were no issues with the bridge, that it was completely up to code. So where does, what does that tell you about where the investigation goes from here? Well, the investigation is going to be into why this ship failed, and it, we know that it was coming in at eight knots, which is relatively fast, and some would say eh, out of control, uh, and, and it hit that bridge very hard. The bridge was built, you know, 47 years ago, um, but again, as the governor said, there were no structural issues. It had been recently inspected. This comes down to this large, massive cargo ship uh, that can carry thousands of containers slamming into this bridge at a high rate of speed. Sam, the NTSB is now leading this investigation. What major questions do they have to answer now? And, and talk about the shipping impact here, because this goes far beyond just Baltimore. 
the NTSB is going to look at all of this. They're going to look at the bridge. They're going to look at the, what's left. And of course, they're going to look at the videos. And then they're going to interview the crew. That's the first thing that's going to happen to try to figure out a little bit about what happened here and to prevent it from happening in the future. But as you mentioned, this is one of the busiest ports. It is a complete blockage right now. There's no way in, no way out. There's ships that are waiting. This is going to have a, a big impact for the area. All right, Sam Sweeney, thank you. And we will have continuing coverage of the bridge collapse throughout the day right here on ABC News Live. Of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane, celebrity attorney Tom Girardi. This story was a nuclear explosion. Today, several victims will get a chance to finally meet Erica Girardi. I'm at sort of a loss for what to say. Did you see the documentary? Yeah. The housewife and the hustler? I did. I wanted Erica to say, I'm sorry, face to face. Erica, why did it take you so long? The housewife and the hustler, too. <laughs> Only on Hulu. This is. ABC News, America's number one news source. The Supreme Court is getting ready to weigh in whether it's legal to allow the abortion pill Mifepristone to be sent by mail without an in-person doctor's visit. The high-stakes challenge to the FDA is the first major abortion case to go before the Supreme Court since Roe v. Wade was overturned two years ago. The abortion pill is the most common way to end a pregnancy, and a change in access could have major implications across the country, even in states where abortion is still legal. And that Supreme Court hearing on the abortion pill is now underway. Let's listen in. Broad coverage here, just to be super precise, there are some triggering requirements of receiving federal funding and so forth. We've cited the relevant provisions at page five of our reply brief. The church amendments have the most comprehensive protection here, and we think that those amendments guard against the kind of injury that respondents are asserting. There are also state law protections that often apply in this context. Thank you. Justice Barrett? Would that be true even if the declarations were interpreted as respondents do to say that they regard any participation, even transfusions or DNCs, after the abortion is otherwise complete because tissue needs to be removed? Yes, I think that would be true. So the most relevant church amendment provision is 42 U.S.C. 300A-7D, and its language says that a doctor shall not be required to perform or, is, or assist in any part of the health care program that would violate the doctor's religious or moral beliefs. So it's tied to the nature of the doctor's beliefs rather than particular procedures. And one other question, and this goes to the merits. As I understand it, the serious adverse consequences